One thing I've been asked about an awful lot recently is how to apply either edging or lippings onto some items. So I'll show you different variations and how we can do it. So with edgings, there's a few different variations. We have the stick down. We have some that requires contact adhesive on both the piece and the edging to apply. And then we have some real wood iron-on edgings here. So this self-adhesive backed edging is really convenient, it's really easy. Peel it off and stick it on. I don't like it. I find it's far too fragile and it just chips off all the time. So we're not going to bother with that. A common use is to cover up the edge of MFC because obviously it's quite ugly chipboard. Now cut your piece slightly longer than what you need. Get your iron nice and hot. It's simple as putting the piece down in place and you iron it on as the name suggests. This only takes a minute or two, just go over it slowly, make sure that it is all nice and secure. Once it's in place, just take a sharp blade, trim the edges off so it is square on either end. One tool I quite like is this little Stanley trimmer. It's dead simple to use, you literally put it on the end of the piece, you squeeze it and you drag it in the direction of the arrow. And there you have it. It is nice, trim, flush and a nice neat joint. When doing birch ply draw boxes, I also like to cover up the grain that is facing. It's the same principle. We're just gonna, we just got some birch edging, iron it on, trim it off, and it hides that, that nasty plywood lamination. Also just tickle the edge with a bit of sandpaper just to make sure it is nice and clean. So when working with oak veneered MDF, or indeed just normal MDF, which I will be painting, I prefer to lip it. This is where we put a piece of wood onto the lip, hence, Lipping. Oak, I've got a piece of European oak here, which is slightly wider to that of the material I'm working with. First off, we're just going to put some glue on. I'm using just some normal Gorilla wood glue at the minute. If you're lucky enough like me and you've got a 23 or 24 gram headless pinner, you just go ahead and put it in place. And just put to one side to let it dry. If you don't actually have a headless pinner, what you can do it's just these normal cheap little four inch strip of inner tube and just place it over the edge like so. Like so. And it creates basically a bandy clamp. So again, bit of Gorilla Glue on the edge. Use the patterned glue spreader. Then what you do is just press down and hold these in place. And of course, the beauty about this is it doesn't leave any pinholes in the surface. And again, we're just going to let this set up and dry now, which is normally 30 to 45 minutes. First thing you want to do is trim off the excess. I'm just using a Japanese pull saw for this. So next up, you're going to want a router. Now, it doesn't have to be in a router table. It can be in a router table. It's up to you. But you will need a flush trim bit. I think this is the R10 from Keyblazer Fixings. It's a bottom bearing cutter. So stick it in your router. Then while it's unplugged, you want to make sure you set the depth correctly. So you want it so the blade part is just past your lipping. And as when using a router, router direction is always important. I've not got a table, so I'll be going from my left to my right. If you've got it in a table, it's upside down. Make sure you go from the right to the left. Then all we're gonna do is we're just gonna trim it off. And then obviously turn it over, do the other side, and there you have a finished Piece. If you want to sand it, you've got to be very careful if it's a veneer because the veneer is so thin. Make sure you don't go into the veneer when it's lit and it's going to be painted. Of course, get some fill and make sure it's totally seamless as you sand it down and you're prepping it for painting. Any questions, stick them down below. Thank you for watching.